Today I have this beautiful little gem for you, which was $1,800. And so far, I'm really, really impressed with it. Now, I've always knocked 300s because I've always felt that they just don't have enough power to be on the freeway. But maybe I've spoke too soon. So today, we're going to take her out on some back roads, see how she does, and then we'll get it on the freeway and see how she handles it. And I'll share my impressions with you guys. So far, the only thing I've actually done to it is to make sure it's running properly. And then, of course, put this little Amazon exhaust on it just to give it a little bit of sound. It already had the TST Industries Fender Eliminator as well as the integrated turn signals. So let's give her a quick little startup and see how she sounds. <laughs> Lots of backfiring on this little exhaust. <laughs> So let's go give her a ride, guys. I'll let you know what I think. Ah, the little exhaust is quite obnoxious. And I will definitely say the brakes are very, very spongy, especially that front brake. It is a used bike, we probably need to bleed the whole system, get some fresh fluid in there and, and potentially do some new pads. It does have 11,700 miles on it, so I'm sure it's due for some decent services. The guy said he just changed the oil, so I'll probably do that here shortly too. I did adjust the chain and make sure the tires are good to go before we uh, started actually riding it around. And It's been pretty decent so far. But for some like ergos on this thing, it is very, very upright. This is like a, a sport naked motorcycle, which is kind of weird uh, considering that that's probably the main difference I think I've noticed from the old R3, this older R3 and the newer R3 is the simple fact that they really changed and messed with the ergos. They actually gave you clip-ons with the new R3, put you in a little bit more of a aggressive racy style position, which I really like. I think that's really cool. This definitely feels very, very upright, very, very comfortable. Your, my knees are bent pretty decent. I am 5'10", 32 inch inseam. So if you were a little bit shorter than me, maybe your knees wouldn't be at that much of a bend as I am. The handlebars feel very close to my body. Like they're very in. So there's no real like stretched out position, which is, you know, a good thing about it, like because it's a, a good beginner bike, that's just a, another aspect of making it more comfortable, easier to ride. I'm sitting up tall, my feet are pretty much right under my butt, they're not crazy bent, and these handlebars are up a little bit higher and back towards me, which makes it perfect for like beginner style. In addition to that, I can flat foot the absolute hell out of this bike, so it is very, very beginner friendly. Another thing I think is really, really cool about the bike is, is the seat. The seat alone is actually pretty damn comfortable. And then in addition to that, unlike my Ninja 400, it's stock seat would just roll your, I don't know why it had this like super dip into the tank. So the whole time you're riding the Ninja 400 or Z400, your crotch would just get rolled directly into the tank. And it was super freaking annoying. And Yamaha just made a flat seat and it's actually pretty dang comfortable. So. I don't know why Kawasaki can't do that. That's another pretty neat aspect of the bike. But ergonomic wise, there's that piece. It's pretty damn comfortable. The newer one is a little more aggressive than this. So depending on whether or not you're looking at maybe getting a newer bike or, or maybe getting an older R3 to save some money. I mean, I got this thing for $1,800. That's freaking cheap as hell. Another thing I did notice so far is it's a really stable motorcycle. Now being how light it is, I'll put the weight up here, it's crazy light. 
I figured I'd get blown around more. There's quite a bit of wind out here today. The bike handles it really well, whether it's because it cuts through and it's aerodynamic and it cuts through well, or if it's the wheelbase, the wheelbase is fairly long. So that's probably why I noticed it's not the most playful motorcycle in the world. Like coming off of my Aprilia, which just, I mean, the slightest movement and that thing just lays over. This thing, like it takes a little bit of work to kind of, you know, massage her around. And that's gonna be because of the wheelbase being long. But in addition to the longer wheelbase and losing a little bit of play, it's very stable. It's gonna make it feel considerably more comfortable at speeds while you're riding down the freeway, is what I'm trying to say with all that. So far, I've been really impressed with this little bike. It's been a lot of fun to ride. Oh, oh I needed more throttle. <laughs> Like you could just wring its little neck. <laughs> so that's another like really fun piece of having these smaller CC bikes. Now I'll always push you more towards the 400s. Um, but then again, like this being like the point of this bike was really it's for my son and it is his first real bike, sort of. He's been riding the Grom and the 250L for a long time. So the 400s, as much as, you know, they're not crazy fast, they still have just enough power to really get to kind of get you in trouble not that this doesn't because I think this does too but I think it's a little more mellow but unlike my little 250L where it's really screaming it's a little hard out, out on the freeway I'm hoping this will be a little bit better for us especially with the way it's windy today I'll really get to find out what that's like it's nice with the with it having abs and a slipper clutch you know those are the like little simple features that really make the bike a little bit safer to ride which is what i like about it most bikes are coming now with slipper clutches and abs whether it's optional or not of course i'm the guy that would love to be able to turn off the rear abs but kind of is what it is the gearbox feels really good and it short shifts pretty decent. I could down blip it pretty decent. Short shift it all right. Yeah, I mean, it, the gearbox is nice on this and that slipper clutch is good. I almost want to say I like the gearbox better than my Ninja 400, which is interesting. God, why can't Yamaha make an R4? Why don't they do that? How cool would that be? Like Yamaha's experience and little fine detail towards riding enjoyment like aggressive riding enjoyment is so far superior to Kawasaki in my opinion Kawasaki hops out there and gives you a better bike that doesn't perform maybe better but it's the other things you want <laughs> it's got just enough power to be a good bike that little Ninja 400 was fantastic but it has its flaws and I'm definitely finding where people liked the R3 better not just because it you know looks but actual feel while riding i can tell that the r3 is actually a pretty decent bike the suspension is not amazing i mean it's definitely better than my ninja 400 i'll say that like i mean these brakes suck ass so it's hard to even really engage them all that well but the dive on the front fork is not that bad and i'm a pretty chunky ass mofo so like my ninja 400 that that just tanks in that suspension is not adjustable no bueno i mean this isn't adjustable either but it's definitely firmer than what i remember of my ninja 400 which is way better so there's a, a better aspect of this bike in a ninja 400. Uh, but the dashboard's actually pretty cool obviously it's super dated everything's coming with nice tfts nowadays and a little more options but for the most part, like that that dashboard is more than adequate with the miles per hour being quite large, the tachometer being large. Who doesn't like a normal tack? I've always liked a normal tack. I don't like the fake digital tacks, but I do like TFT display, so. <laughs> but having a fuel gauge, temperature gauge, gear select indicator, like you've got everything you need on this bike. It's pretty cool. And this is a 2017, so Yamaha was definitely thinking it through back then, which is pretty cool. I did expect for it being a kind of more beginnerish styled motorcycle that the mirrors would be easier to see out of. They're just as bad as uh, the C Super Sports, the 600s, man. They're freaking 
all you see is your arm or your shoulder. I mean, you're sitting a little more upright, so I see my elbow versus my shoulder like I would on my CBR or my 636. But definitely a great little around town bike. All right, let's give her a little freeway test now that we got the growlers filled up and we're ready for the rest of Sunday's football. Oh gosh, come on baby. Well, got to 80 pretty good. Feels pretty solid on the road. We're going about 75 right now. This ain't half bad. I'd say the big negative right now is looking at the RPMs. It's fairly vibey right now, but we also are running at 8,500 RPMs at 80 miles an hour. So yeah, and that's why I would say these bikes maybe are not great for this just because that's a, that's a pretty high rev right there for just cruising on the freeway. Now I'm going a little bit faster than I should, so we'll bring her down to like adequate speed for where I live. It's probably it's 65 miles an hour, so I'll usually ride 72-ish. Well, drive 72-ish. I won't tell you what I ride on my normal bikes. <laughs> but 72, 77, we're down there at 8,000 RPMs. That's still pushing quite a bit. I would assume that would really hamper the fuel economy, but probably not by a ton because it's a small engine. So I don't know. This ain't bad. I mean, if alongside the RPMs being a little bit high and it being just a hair vibey, it's not that bad. The fact that there's quite a bit of wind out here and I'm not really getting blown around at all is pretty dang nice. And the bike feels very, very planted. It's doing it just fine. I'd say the biggest negative, like I said, is maybe that RPM range. Maybe a sprocket change could fix that. I don't know if you would want to lose low down power on this bike so that you could ride on the freeway. But that, that is a possibility. Like if you were thinking long term, you know, and you have no choice, you're gonna be on the freeway. Maybe a sprocket change would solve that problem. I wouldn't want to push it much more. Like that's 9,000 RPMs already. Maybe we'll give her a little more beans. Yeah, I mean, it feels stable. And we're going 90 with a little bit of a tuck. Uh, I'm not getting blown around and I'm holding it quite well, so. Can the bike do it? Yes, I am definitely wrong in that instance. This bike can handle freeway speeds. There is no point in dropping gears on this bike. It just kind of is what it is. This is what you're getting. So, it's not that bad. It is definitely doable. I gotta stop talking shit about 300s. This is actually pretty badass. This is a good little beginner bike. It'll get you to work. You can commute. Uh, I don't know if I would want to 40 minutes, 9,000 RPMs or 8,000 RPMs on this thing, but that's kind of pushing it a little, little too hard in my opinion, but shorter distances, 20 mile drive to work or whatever. Okay, sure. I mean, really, if you don't have like major highways to get you somewhere and you can be all back roads and have a good time and you're more city riding, like the gain in power from the Ninja 400 over this may be not worth it. This might be just as adequate if you're not doing big hauls on the freeway for long distances. Maybe this is a potentially a better option. And I'm quite surprised I never rode one before and tried to find out because it is pretty damn good. I stand corrected. This is a cool little bike. Thanks again for watching guys. Hope you enjoyed this. So let me know what you guys think. We'll see you guys next week. Peace.